America's Occupy Wall Street movement began less than two months ago amidst anger at the perceived corporate greed behind the global financial crisis. It's now spread around the world, including to Australia, and there were some angry scenes on the weekend when police broke up the Sydney rally. Given that our economy is among the healthiest and most stable in the world, Tracy Bowden's been investigating whether the protesters have a legitimate message or not. The people united will never be defeated. It's a movement that's gone global, an international protest against corporate greed and power. From its beginnings at Wall Street in New York City, it spread from London across Europe to Asia and Australia. Free to protest. We are the workers. We are the indebted. We are the immigrants and the indigenous. We are the homeless. We are the students. We are the unemployed. We are the underrepresented people of the world. This is the beginning of a protest against uh, politics being dominated by finance, and it's about time. Protests in the US have drawn huge crowds. This is not a gathering of the marginalised. They say they represent mainstream America. We got sold out! We got sold out! In America, of course, unemployment is twice the Australian figure. Uh, American debt is much higher, the American deficit is much higher than in Australia, so of course they've got more reasons to feel angry about the banks and what's happening on Wall Street. We don't have any reason really to be that angry here. So if mainstream Australia managed to avoid the worst of the global financial crisis, what's fueling the protests here? It's not entirely about the GFC, although I think that is a big factor. Um, Today we're part of a global economy and to say that something that doesn't affect one country won't affect another is not necessarily true. So we just have to keep these kinds of concepts in mind that this may also be a movement that's about foresight as well as problems that are existing in our society. Martin Place in Sydney and City Square in Melbourne have been the focus of the Australian rallies. Eventually, police shut them down in both cities, with multiple arrests and accusations of unnecessary force. This movement will only get stronger because of these illegitimate actions. Economist Oliver Mark Hartvich from the free market think tank, the Centre for Independent Studies, says so far the Australian rallies are being attended mostly by activists. They are anti-capitalist, they are deeply unhappy with the system. They are also mixing with the ecological movement, the hard green movement, the post-communist movement, the trade unionist movement and some student politics. So it's quite a bunch of different people. Melbourne Lord Mayor Robert Doyle supported the police action to remove the protesters. In a newspaper opinion piece, he described the Occupy movement as a self-righteous, narcissistic, self-indulgent rabble. That's the pot calling the kettle black, isn't it? Um, that's the kind of rhetoric that he would use, considering that he doesn't particularly want to talk to us. He hasn't actually spoken to us, so what he knows of the movement is irrelevant. Are they from the Socialist Alliance? Are they from the workers' network? Are they from the left-wing militant unions? Because while purporting to speak under a banner of peaceful demonstration, there are a number of groups here that are capturing this cause for their own political purposes. It is a silly, ignorant comment, and it, it will offend lots of people quite righteously who are there for very altruistic reasons. If they can't see there's altruism in people protesting about the, the state of society, when it's as dysfunctional as it is now, then they're just, you know, they, they should be going up to IPSM for a new pair of glasses. It's a populist movement, which means that anybody can be involved and anybody can have their voice heard. The, the diversity is, is that, it's entirely diverse. Um, I've met lawyers and doctors and business analysts and bankers. I'm a, I'm a tutor and I'm a student. Please make Steve Keane very welcome. A keynote speaker at the Sydney rally was Professor Stephen Keane, one of the economists who predicted the global financial crisis. Economists are not experts on the economy. They're experts on a model of the economy.
Would you like to see more Australians taking to the streets on this issue? Yeah, I think it's really a question of the, the, it'll take the pain level to get higher before that really happens on a grand scale. But certainly the fact that people are protesting and objecting to the state of society right now is quite justified because if the conventional economists, the neoclassicals and the politicians they advise were right, there'd be absolutely nothing to complain about. We'd be in a booming economy. Well, clearly they're wrong. And so it's time the public said so. Oliver Mark Harvish believes the Australian protesters are aiming their message at the wrong target. They should really protest in Europe, and if they are protesting in Europe, they should not protest outside uh, central banks. They should protest outside uh, the centres of government. They should stand outside the Elysee, Paris in Par uh, Elysee Palace in Paris. They should stand outside the Chancellery in Germany. They should perhaps camp outside Downing Street. That's all fine, because in the end, it's politicians making the decisions. Economists won't reform economics, and financiers won't reform the financial system. It's a public revolt that's needed, and you're the beginning of it, and I applaud you for it. The organisers of the Occupy movements in Australia are regrouping, planning the next phase of their protest. Occupy Sydney says its next rally will be on November the 5th. The movement is trying to open the debate and bring the discussions and the issues to the fore so that they can be solved. And the Melbourne Occupy protesters say they'll be looking at restarting their demonstrations in coming days too. Tracy Bowden reporting.